Okay, welcome to part two of my July 4th uh, full garden tour. Actually, it's uh, July 7th, but I'm going to still call title this a July 4th tour just for continuity's sake with my uh, previous uh, part one. So we're going to get started here. This has got kind of a bad sun field, but if I don't get it shot now, the, 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 I'll have an afternoon thunder shower and I won't be able to get get it shot at all. So we'll start over here. Um, this is the north side of my house, by the way. These are the couple of flame azaleas that I planted a while back. I did a separate video on them. Really, so far, have not uh, grown much, but uh, I'm hoping for big things out of them. Something's been eating on the leaves a little bit, uh, but we'll see how they go. This one here is like uh, Oh, it's about six or seven inches tall. All right, this uh, one bed here, I'm going to start here because this is in the shade at the moment. I call this bed the big dig because it was such a tough chore digging this thing out. Railroad bed, just solid, solid, hard packed clay. I even had to do a French drain in it whenever I uh, put this bed in. This end of it here, this is a Betty Magnolia. Uh, I'm hoping it'll be a windbreak uh, for this uh, bed uh, once it gets a little bit uh, bigger. And I'm going to kind of keep it uh, more of a bushy type of uh, tree rather than a tall type of tree. It uh, wouldn't do well being a tall type of tree anyway because it has, you know, not enough head space. The, uh, it's a dwarf type of magnolia to start with. Right here is some uh, dwarf type of uh, Joe Pie weed. I don't know the exact name. I've, I've mentioned the exact name in numerous other videos, but uh, dwarf Joe Pie weed by dwarf, it's still going to be five and a half to six foot tall uh, instead of like eight foot tall, maybe nine foot tall that normal Joe Pie weed gets. It's just now uh, going to be blooming before too much longer. It's Kind of turning purple there on the ends. Okay, I'm going to try to move along a little bit faster than average. Here's my hummingbird mint. No hummingbirds have went to it whatsoever that I could see. And this is some blue boa agastache. In previous years, it's been a tremendous pollinator plant, but so far this year, not so much. I used to have it in three locations. It's down to one location because it died out in the other two for some reason. This is Senna. This is a fairly recent uh, planting. Uh, if you'll see my bog plant uh, video, uh, this is Senna marylandica. I planted one of these down in the bog and one here. Actually, this one is looking, that one's doing okay, but this one's looking better, uh, but I do give it uh, plenty of water. Every time I'm out here watering it, watering, I, I uh, water this thing because I know that it likes a lot of water. Bloomerang lilac. It's actually sent up pretty much all this growth here this year. It's kind of, you know, a few of them just outrun the rest of the uh, bush. I may have to trim that back. I'm still underwhelmed by the, forget about the pollinator situation here, which is not the best uh, this year, especially this year. Uh, the Bloomerang lilac just has, has so far, it's in a second full season, pitiful blooms uh, early in the year and even more pitiful blooms later on. It looks like just these uh, tips that grew on out past everything else is going to rebloom a little bit, but uh, that's going to be pretty much it, I think. An ARP rosemary, which uh, purportedly is the most uh, winter hardy rosemary. I'm ripping this thing out. The, the, there's going to be a um, Itea, Virgin, Virginica Itea go right here, probably, unless I determine that that's too close to the uh, to the bloomerang, which, yeah, if I hadn't paid so much for that, I'd probably rip it out. I probably ought to anyway. But uh, either the Itea Virginica is going to go there, or I'll wind up putting it here where these Hyperium pig coats are. There's three Hyperium pig coats in here. And they make a really pretty shrub with really pretty yellow buttercup blooms, but uh, not only do the pollinators not go to them, they, as far as I'm concerned, 
it has no pollen. I've not been able to detect a grain of pollen in it. Uh, we have some, uh, okay, this is uh, some Verbena bonariensis, which I have a ton of in the other bed, so I don't need to cover it. Uh, there's some Liatris. Uh, it should be like real thick around the base. And there, there's the bloom heads on it. But it should be thicker around the base, and it's not because things have been eating it. You can see this one here. This one is pretty pitiful. I mean, that's just about almost as low as something can be <laughs> uh, eat down, and they have done it. And this had a potential of blooming for a good long time, and then boom, they decided they needed that too. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay. Uh, here we I've got a grouping. It's kind of hard to see everything blends together here. I've got three one two Three Shoal Creek Vitex in here They yeah, kind of close together, but I'm gonna leave them like that because the Shoal Creek Vitex has really Panned out. Let me show you. This is one of them. This is my best bloomer so far It's not my biggest Shoal Creek Vitex but it's the one that's over in the other bed over there. But that's the one which has bloomed the best and has ha attracted a moderate amount of pollinators here in a bad pollinator season, if you want to know the truth of the matter. Uh, here we have some bee balm. This is Monarda fistulosa. An occasional pollinator. I mean, I know it's reported to be just fantastic and maybe where there's more pollinators it would be but I don't know I just don't know about this area I, I'm beginning to think somebody in the area some farmers or somebody is using excessive pesticides or something because if the pollinators keep dwindling and dwindling and dwindling here uh, fairly tall uh, nanho purple butterfly bush here doing doing really nicely to tell the truth of the matter the thing is six foot tall uh, here we have uh, Crocosmia lucifer. I'll show the blooms on it uh, here when I get around front in a minute because uh, you know they're a little past their peak, but still still doing okay uh, bloom rise on, bloom wise on the Crocosmia and the butterfly. The, not the butterflies, but the hummingbirds have uh, have been going to it. Here is I can't remember what kind of uh, lobelia or cardinal flower. The, Let's say this is. It's a kind of a burgundy colored one right here. There's another burgundy colored one of a different uh, cultivar, and it's not done as well. That's a Monet Moment uh, uh, butterfly or a cardinal flower there. It's uh, not ever bloomed yet. I've already showed this uh, oh, Pinstemon uh, Marianus uh, earlier on. Uh, it bloomed, looked nice. Uh, hummingbirds liked it a little bit. It's forming, uh, forming seeds on it right now. Uh, I think I'm going to plant them. I'm, I'm going to let them mature, plant them, see what happens. Because I think they will make some form of uh, Pinstemon Marianus. Maybe not the exact same plant, but uh, some sort. Okay, let me try to spin around here to the other side of the bed without giving anybody motion sickness so I can get a better shot of the Crocosmia lucifer. So there you go. A little bit of sun playing off of this one here, so that looks pretty good. I'm very happy with the Crocosmia lucifer. I'm just going to let it keep spreading, spreading, spreading. I really don't care if it takes over all this whole side of the bed. If it does, I'll transplant a few other things out of here. We've got a uh, Caryopteris here. Black Knight Caryopteris, uh, which actually is blooming about a month early this year for some reason. Don't know, don't know why. This is a uh, white, some kind of petite. Uh, petite is in the name on the butterfly bush. I don't know the exact name right now. We've got some uh, Glardia right here. Uh, we have really a good example of some Pinstemon, not Pinstemon, but uh, Helenium Mardi Gras right here. Now two years ago, and it does have, um, they, they, there's a few, probably can't see them, there's a few tiny bees uh, floating around on it, sweat type bees, at least 
when I started that sentence there was. I don't see them now. And behind the uh, Lenny and Mardi Gras is a Luna Hardy Hibiscus Pink Swirl. Uh, just started blooming here just a day or two ago. I don't really think it draws many pollinators, or it hasn't yet. I, I haven't really checked to see how much pollen it produces. But uh, it's not a huge hardy hibiscus. It's, it's much smaller than the uh, Mars Madness and Midnight Marvel uh, hardy hibiscus. But uh, still, it uh, produces some really, really nice looking blooms here. Okay, man, I'm really smelling this uh, Nanho purple butterfly bush. And here's a little bit better shot of the bee balm. It's already sort of on its way out here after only a couple of weeks. It's past its prime. Uh, I'm going to pull part of this out. I, I, I planted three Jacob Kleins in here last, uh, last fall. Apparently not a single one of them survived. They look great, and I don't know what happened. I would like to pull out these three Hyperium hit coats, pull out about half of this Monarda fistulosa, and put in some Jacob Klein Monarda, and there's a couple of um, bushier type ones. Uh, someone told me about it. I can't remember the name exactly. Garden Addicts is the one the, uh, that uh, put me on to this new kind, so I, I'm going to give it a try. By next, by next year anyway. Okay, I think that pretty much covers that particular bed. We'll move over here to the bright sun, so I don't know how this is going to work out. We'll see. I just got to show this uh, corner pot here. This keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. African blue basil in the center, uh, flanked by the three wild magic basils. Uh, I really am enjoying this pot because it, it, it draws a uh, Quite a few pollinators. Not like last year, uh, but uh, still quite a few. I see a wool carter bee still guarding it. I did a, a video of it attacking a, uh, a carpenter bee, <laughs> and there's that wool carter bee still. It's been on it all year. Uh, here's our Mexican heather looking good. Not that many pollinators yet, but uh, you know, historically it's done great in the past. Here's a closer up uh, than what I showed a little earlier of the uh, Show Creek uh, Vitex uh, here, which I'm, I'm really liking the Show Creek Vitex. Uh, it's a great plant. If I can just come up with a couple of more mild winters to give this thing a little bit of size, uh, I'll have some bigger ones than I otherwise would because uh, it will die. Out. the branches will die back quite a bit if, if I have a really tough winter. If the branches are not, you know, nice and hard and woody, but uh, maybe I maybe I can be lucky on it. Of course, there's the Autumn Joy Sedum, the omnipresent Autumn Joy Sedum that everybody has and loves, and so do I. Uh, there's my pineapple sage, which uh, will get taller. It will get a fair amount taller, but it, apparently this uh, will not bloom till this fall sometime. Uh, Last year was almost September. I'm surprised it even came back. Okay, moving on. I did plant some more African. I've got African blue basil and wild magic basil kind of scattered out throughout the uh, garden here. Uh, this right here is my, uh, I've already sort of covered this, but uh, this is the red yucca, which it, believe it or not, it's going on three years old is is barely hanging on from year to year but uh, twice this year now i have added lime to this uh, soil so uh, in its native habitat in the i think the southwest uh, it ha has uh, it likes the alkaline soils so i've been adding lime to it uh, so far i've got away with two additions of lime to it and i'm going to add a third here in a couple weeks I'm just going to keep adding the lime until it seems like it doesn't like the lime. I'm going to put lime on it every month and just see what happens because it hasn't done much. Sonic Pink Rigelia, more Hyperium hit coat. This is the uh, uh, mother plant, if you will. Uh, it's, it's going way out. Every single Hyperium hit coat I've got is going to be ripped out of the ground. Right here is some um, Betony, Betony officinalis, which actually is a different than the Florida Betony. Betony, it doesn't spread like the Florida does. This is a success story here so far. This, uh, my 
as I've stated in previous videos, uh, this is a new arbor. My uh, flimsy arbor was broken down by 16 inches of snow and a heavily, heavy load of Carolina jessamine. And I never did well bloom-wise with the Carolina jessamine, so I now have uh, some honeysuckle on it, and it's already. I'm not sure what can be seen in this hot, bright sun, what can't be, but I've already got about five uh, five panels up on this cattle. This is a double cattle panel, by the way. I cut one in half and so doubled it, so you know for extra strength. But it's already climbed five panels up here on that side, and it's about four panels up here on this side. However, the uh, one on the left has like twice the mass. Uh, I'll put again what kind of honeysuckle this is. It's a it's a cultivar, a chow chow something or another. But this is a fragrant honeysuckle, so I'm hoping that's true. As I don't have enough fragrant stuff in my garden. In the previous bed I just in shot, I do have some uh, uh, Daphne Eternal fragrance. Uh, it's really not much of a plant to look at right yet, but I'm hoping for the best, so I'll show it some other time when it gets a, gets a, a decent number of blooms on it. Here's our Sunny Borders Blue Speedwell, looking pretty good. I got quite a bit of it. It's over on this side of the pathway, and over here, and it continues on to right there. Uh, again, in years past, uh, been, it's done well pollinator-wise. This year, not so much. Um, this was put in last year, uh, this butterfly bush, uh, Grand Cascade butterfly bush. Uh, it's been kind of a slow grower, but supposed to ultimately get very large, have very, very large panicle, bloom panicles on it. And you can see, just, just look at the bloom panicles that's starting on that thing wow it, i think it's gonna i think it's really gonna do well eventually uh, i got a new I, I ripped out the old wisteria that was here it was just splattered out everywhere i could have eventually got it under control but i kind of wanted more honeysuckle since i know for a fact that the hummingbirds like this gold flame honeysuckle you can see some let's see if i can get a close up right there is gold flame honeysuckle this is a little bit better example of the uh, gold flame uh, honeysuckle this is how the uh, blooms look like just before they open and this is how they look just after they open and this will be what I put on my uh, latest chain uh, trellis so I'm hoping for big things out of it the the hummingbirds dearly love this plant. When you have in the spring, when there's a, a mass of these blooms, it really is quite stunning. We have here another white uh, butterfly bush. This one here, I never have seen one that came up and is quite <laughs> this symmetrical is what this one happens to be. I mean, that just comes, I mean, that's kind of just perfect looking. It really really is I don't know if you can tell in the Sun or not more uh, more African blue basil I went overboard on the African blue basil this year because I had such good luck last year on it pollinator wise and just uh, pretty good luck this year it's not as good as what I would want right here is uh, some plethora ruby spice plethora which is just starting to bloom I'm gonna see if I can smell it Oh yeah, yeah. It, this really has already is developing that strong clethora odor, which smells unlike anything else. Uh, some people might not even like it. It's a, it's a different smell, but I like it. it it's it's very different than a than normal than a normal smell. <laughs> uh, here's some of my uh, cleomes. Let me get around front here and show this these cleomes. I showed them just starting. Uh, my last uh, tour uh, now they're in bloom this is probably the best they'll look they'll just keep getting taller and taller and taller and and keep blooming for heck at least another six weeks maybe all the way to frost there'll be some kind of minimal bloom but 
I've had Cleomis here for 20 years and only planted them once. <laughs> so there, that's how they are on the uh, reseeding. I thought a time or two about just getting a bunch of pavers and, and a, say unused section of the yard and putting them like a half inch apart, all of them, and then spreading a bunch of Cleome seeds around throughout the pavers. I think that would actually look pretty nice. Okay, let's move on here. This is my largest, I would say it's my largest candy corn plant, but what I do when I propagate these things, I'll have numerous candy corn plants that, has nice, that, that, that are nicely branched, and those will go in individual pots. And then I'll have like maybe 10 uh, candy corn plants that are just straight up, no branching. And I take all of them and put them in a single large pot and they wind up looking uh, really nice like that, that large pot of uh, just straight up ones. Uh, eventually they branch a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are, they are branching uh, out now, but uh, when they went in this pot, it was just no branching at all on these things. My uh, Millennium Garlic is looking really, really nice. It's not quite, not quite hit its peak yet. Uh, times past, this has been very good pollinator-wise. It has just about outgrown this pot. Uh, this is about a four or five year old plant. I am gonna have to divide it next, uh, next spring. I'll be putting it in part of it in the ground and part of it probably in two or three pots. Uh, here's just some red lantana, nothing pollinator-wise. Hummingbird-wise, it just bears repeating that uh, if you want hummingbirds, if you want to take care of your hummingbirds and keep them fat and happy, plant the uh, capilla, otherwise known as cigar plant. I know there is one variety called uh, Vermillionaire, uh, which I have tried, and uh, it's just about the same. Uh, really, it don't look that much different. The foliage is a little greener. The blooms are just a little redder. So it's just a minimal improvement in my opinion. But uh, I actually think the hummingbirds like the older, the, the straight variety slightly better than they do the Vermillionaire. Uh, another variety which I do want to try, which is a little bit, at least one zone hardier, is the David Verity uh, Capilla. Uh, I should be able to leave it outside in the ground and it should come back. However, this stuff here, I put it on an unheat. this is on 7A, put it on an unheated back porch this last winter and it stayed evergreen. It stayed evergreen on the unheated back porch, so that's not, not too bad. Right over here, I have my, uh, it's an aster the radon's favorite aster and it's kind of flopping a little but it's kind of enclosed on the three sides by by various uh, plants here and, and this kettle uh, so let's try to get a close-up of it uh, it is really really done well i'm expecting like a ton a ton of uh, purple blooms on this stuff the other aster up front here is half the height it normally is because the rabbits have been chewing it down to the ground almost, but it seems like they've laid off of it here in the last uh, two weeks, so uh, I do believe I am going to get blooms on it, so that's a good thing. This Caryopteris here, I think I need to shoot it from the other side. Uh, the Caryopteris here is almost in full bloom, not quite, and like I say, this is a month early. I really wish it had held off because at, uh, typically here, even on the good pollinator years, uh, I have more pollinators in the fall than any other time of year for some reason. And the bumblebees, carpenter bees have always loved this in the fall. So I think, you know, if they're here in the fall, they won't have any of this uh, caryopteris because it'll probably be bloomed out by then. Over here in this bed, uh, there's some more of the uh, plethora. I've got the, uh, now this is a transplant of um, vanilla spice plethora. I'll show a better example of it later on. And I've still got a mystery here on the 16 candles plethora. This is a normal 16 candles plethora right here. I always says it's a dwarf style and this is dwarfier than usual. And this is another one right here, which 
I don't know unless it's broke its dormancy or something it's uh, sent up some other uh, other kind of uh, plant <laughs> right here uh, I guess another cultivar of plant plethora plethora not plethora I do have a plethora of clethoras but this is a clethora and I am going to sniff that blossom right there and see if it has the typical clethora smell which I bet it does it does not <laughs> let me try this one over here I'm shocked okay okay that smells nothing like a clethora so either I don't know what the deal is I mean, let's, let's look at the bottom of it here Whoa. okay now here is a branch of clethora and here is two branches of this other thing I'm gonna wind up this fall digging this up and seeing if two different plants have intertwined themselves together here I'm gonna try to identify this other thing first because it's not a clethora it does not have clethora smell the uh, bloom structure looks different so I don't know <laughs> I don't know what's going on uh, here it's strange all right moving on moving on moving on I didn't quite cover this but uh, I'm gonna I am gonna shoot a uh, chain trellis video later on showing how I constructed these uh, like I say I ripped out my wisteria and the gold flame uh, gold flame honeysuckle is going right there and right here this is my best hosta this is either June or first frost one or the other both of the uh, breeds are in here this you know I'll show them right side by side right here I like these with the uh, yellowish creamy uh, tip or edges better than I do this one here with the two shades of green but like I say one's first frost one's June hosta all right moving on my azalea plant to the low growing azalea plant continues to be I mean that's what I would uh, like here I prefer it to be low growing it uh, has doubled in size this year which is strange just about the last plant sold at the uh, Walmart at the uh, Kmart here in town before the Kmart went out of business I got picked this up says something like enchanting elegance on it I believe exactly that's what it said when you look them up I really don't see any as a named enchanting elegance so there you go like I say blooms a full month later than any other as I've ever been associated with this is a new addition first first love Veronica I really am hoping that these bloom uh, spikes here get a lot bigger than they are uh, no pollinators yet but uh, yeah what else is new around here okay a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, salvia darcii in this bed here is some of the uh, status plant uh, which is blooming uh, this has been starting its blooms for like two weeks I've never seen a plant I, I'm hoping it will you know flush on out here but I've never seen a plant uh, assuming it does flush out that has been this slow to bloom after it first starts okay there's the butterfly bush here is uh, my fuchsia magella magella inca I never can say it quite right uh, but that's pretty close uh, this is one that uh, well right now it's uh, oh it's about 13 inches tall uh, can't really say if the hummingbirds I mean I planted it specifically for the hummingbirds can't really say if they've been on it or not because this is not an area of my garden I get back to very much but I'm gonna you know let it get to be a great big plant and see what happens uh, a lots of times these plants when they're little it doesn't attract anything and then when they get bigger uh, your pollinators start noticing them a, a little bit more alrighty let's move on here this is probably my biggest Hyperion heat coat and pulling it out no pollinators no fragrance no pollen bad uh, but it is very pretty when it blooms this is another uh, vanilla spice uh, clethora right here 
very nice looking plant uh, and uh, when it blooms it's really really pretty okay let's move on this big bush here i don't know what kind it is but it's eventually will be on its way out i kind of hate to see it go but it's been all broken up in various storms and everything through the through the years but it serves as a grace even still serves as a great windbreak for this garden it just keeps the winds from sweeping over the whole thing and knocking stuff down here we have a little bit of milkweed i did in the spring uh, like may have a fly, have a few monarchs come through and laid eggs and raise i saw some big caterpillars on it i know like fifth in star type big caterpillars but then i came out here one day and no caterpillars and i never did see i looked around for chrysalises never found them so i don't know here is some of the my milkweeds have always 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 had a lot of aphids at some point in the year and this year is no exception to the rule planted a few uh, smaller milkweeds here this year from seed this little section right here i'm gonna show it from a different angle at first i just planted some uh, african blue basil in it okay first off let me explain this area this had two or three arborvitaes in it that got all busted up in the 16 inch snowstorm we had so i took the arborvitaes out amended the soil not enough yet uh, what i need to do is put some blocks along it and do kind of a raised type bed uh, here i would have i didn't get it amended enough because it was just getting so so much higher than the surrounding area but anyway i've got some uh, african blue basil right here uh, it's growing pretty good got some wild magic here which has been wild magic basil which has been very slow to start and then uh, since uh, the wild magic basil was starting so slow i wound up planting some zinnias in it some seed company sent me a bunch of free pack of uh, zinnia seed this year i wasn't going to plant any and it's been slow to start but i think it's uh sort of picked up here and is going to do uh reasonably good the only thing about these will be i'm sure i bet y'all most of them are going to be like the double type and triple or pom-pom looking zinnias with a where they it's very hard for the pollinators to get to the pollen but maybe it'll have a few uh you know single type of uh, zinnias on it and they'll they'll do okay uh this this here i never have been able to identify this the reason it looks all like this on this end is because it there was an arborvitae that was stuck right up against it and now there's not uh, the hostas could fill it in uh, hostas grow absolutely like weeds around here i mean you can trample them step on them whatever it doesn't matter they come back i hear people complaining all the time about stuff eating theirs their hostas and all like it's the end of the world but i mean if it was a plant nobody liked everybody would be complaining about how hard it is to get rid of them because i've dug out several and uh, and had them come right straight back and for those of you who do not know there is a difference between lemon balm and lemon mint they are totally different plants this is lemon balm it will eventually have very small white blooms on it. it has a real nice pretty chartreuse color really shows up in the bright sun i put it over here next to my lemon mint so i could show the uh, contrast the lemon mint is i grew this from seed this is five plants planted obviously too close together here in this cage i put it in the cage because i didn't know if the ra rabbits were gonna get on it or not but uh, this is gonna be the better plant pollinator wise uh, this i don't think will be that good some people say uh, they have a few on it but uh, this is kind of small maybe maybe this fall i might get a couple of three weeks of um of blooms out of it before it frosted out uh, we'll see uh, both of these are annuals except for maybe uh, way farther down south than this 
right up here in the hanging baskets. I forgot to cover this one. They call it, it's a tender perennial, like you would have to take it inside in Zone 7A to, for a Dover winter. It's a Lufos, not Lufa, but Lufos. And the guy where I bought it claimed the hummingbirds loved it. It does have the correct style of bloom. It's a petunia looking bloom, but it's not a petunia. It's got the tubular blooms. Uh, so far they've not really liked it, but I haven't really had a whole lot of blooms on it yet. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it here from Zone 7A, Western North Carolina. I'm going to finish out with just a slow pan around at stuff here. So you can either stick around for that or just hit the off button there. <laughs> Bye, everybody.